Hi. <laughs> Hi guys. Welcome to another episode of the of the Mazda Miata restoration 1994 Mazda Miata on uh, the Rusty Beauties channel. And we just finished the last episode. It's actually two minutes for us. For you, might be a few weeks. <laughs> Anyways, we still have the tools around because we're gonna continue working now, and we're starting the new video. So in the last video, we rebuilt this part of the we watch here, and this inside. Let me turn on the light as well. And here inside, we made a patch for here, and this is the wheel well starting from here and coming out to here and now in this episode we want to continue with closing this area here so this is easy to say but <laughs> it's not just a cover that ends here we need to extend the wheel well from here along with this curve here and this flange and this flange of course needs to match our outer fender and even the rocker or seal or whatever you want to call it which also has this curve at the end. So let's put the rocker quickly in place and uh, then maybe it's gonna make more sense to you what I'm saying. All right, so now that the rocker is in, you see what I'm talking about, right? This flange needs to join this flange and this curve here needs to keep going here inside and go all the way there uh, and then on top of course when we put the the wing or the fender whatever you want to call it or quarter it's gonna continue from here and it's gonna overlap this flange so the inner wheel well goes inside here this flange but the fender goes on the outside actually we can put the fender on too let me show you like that so you see how they overlap each other here so this goes and overlaps it here so we can make this flange separately so start from here goes inside here and all the way to the bottom that's going to be our flange and then we can make another piece of material metal that goes and covers here and again it curves here as it comes out it curves and meets our flange that our imaginary flange that is here right so what i did already is i cut and bend this piece which is going to be our flange and this piece which is going to be our wheel well inside and i made that based on this pattern which let me show you quickly how I imagine it in my head. So I try to make this curve match this curve. So that's how it's gonna be. So more or less like this. And of course I left the patch that I made three quarters of an inch longer because I want to bend the flange coming out this way and then we can spot weld them together here. So frankly, that side is the easier side. The harder part is going to be here to make this curve. So this needs to curve down and meet our flange. And even harder, it is going to be inside there. Because here we need to make a, literally like a scoop. Now where the cardboard ends, this is not the end of our patch. It's going to be extended more and it's going to curve this way and it needs to come here that's why if you noticed the flange that i made i made three quarters flange with three quarters on the other side but there as it goes down i made it wider so it widens up at the bottom so it can meet here with this piece so the bottom of this piece is going to curve a little bit i'm going to try to curve the, curve it a little bit but also the flange that it comes here it's gonna start curving up and hopefully they're gonna meet somewhere so we will see how that's gonna work this is what i'm talking about where i made the piece a little bit more extended so eventually when it bends this way this is gonna start bending this way and it's gonna meet the other piece so this we have to curve of course to match this curve but it also we need to curve it also to match this curve and I suggest that we start 
a little bit curving it this way. So this means we need to shrink here and actually we have to shrink a lot right here in this area and this is actually longer than what I need. I made it stick out one inch approximately. So this corner here, this curve is gonna end up somewhere here I believe. So let's start shrinking it here. That's a big curve here, but we're gonna make it work. That's why they cut the flange so short, because there's a lot of material here that needs to be shrunk. Like right here, there's a lot of material that needs to be shrunk, but that's fine. It's almost there. So, you know what? We're gonna come back to that. Let's curve it this way a little bit, yeah. So now we have to stretch this flange. Okay, that's very roughly where it is, but now I can start bringing it down here. So I need to shrink a lot more here. Yeah, we're gonna have to accommodate this here in particular. This not really, because we're far from that. doesn't matter because from here this is the wheel wheel it needs to actually start curving in oh, yeah. sure. so we are good there and only here we're gonna see at the end so we're gonna leave it for now here if we need to adjust it we're gonna adjust it later um, yeah let's see how it's gonna match on the car So I was able to bend the template and now if I take it out, see here, that's how it needs to be, how much needs to be shrunk. So it looks like we, just by shrinking a little bit here in this area, a flat piece of metal, it's gonna turn into our shape that we want. Looks like it because the paper is a flat piece of paper, right? But now it is matching perfectly everywhere just by removing some material here, which means that we can s shrink it here and it's gonna turn into this shape. But isn't it domed? It is going domed. This way and it's going this way. Yeah, and the dome happens right here because yeah. we shrunk this. You see where we shrunk? Now this here it is overlapping itself. That's how it is. So yeah. if we basically remove this piece of material by shrinking it, the dome is gonna happen. And now we can actually shorten it a lot to this line, but we're gonna start first by making the flange on this side. So this is the side that needs the flange. And here I know when I put it there, I know that I cut it a little bit sh too short. So here it needs to be starting from here, from zero here, going out a little bit, like quarter inch, and then coming back to zero somewhere here. So if I put it here, that's, that needs to be our flange that needs to be bent up. But I want to mark it on the other side. I'll show you later why I want it on the other side. Like I said, from here to here, somewhere on the tape template, I want to add a little bit material. So, like this, and like this, something like that. And here at the end, we're gonna cut it like this, and maybe like this, because now this material needs to go down, and then 
here at the bottom. We don't need so much material, but this is where it needs to curve also that way. So we're gonna make this V cut here. All right, so here now where it's a straight line, we can just bend a little bit at a time on the vise. Like a little bit at a time here. A little bit here. Here we can go a little bit more now. But now for the rest, we need to use something else like this. And here is why I wanted the line to be on this side because I can bend it down easily. There's also different techniques. We can do two more things. We can also use these pliers that have the parallel jaws. They're not like opening like this on a V shape. They are always parallel to each other. So you can come and grab a little bit at a time and bend down. Or you can even, you can even take an adjustable wrench. Doesn't matter if it's metric or imperial. <laughs> and you can adjust it a little bit thicker than the metal and just go like this. And now only here we still need to keep, because you see even it raised it up here, which we need to go in the other direction actually. We need to shrink it because this needs to go this way. Now if we need a nice crisp edge here, then of course we need to find something that, like a dolly that has a nice crisp edge. Here it doesn't really matter for me. That's why I'm not worried, I'm just using this hammer because it's because it was on the bench actually. So now this should match pretty well here. Yes it does, it has this additional piece that we wanted. And now from here we want this to curve up. We're gonna cut a lot of this because that's gonna meet our other piece our flange that comes this way and it has the extension this way. So for now we're just gonna turn it around, but again I need the mark on the other side actually. So like this. So we're gonna start actually from higher, curving it from here up. It's gonna start coming down and this is the maximum depth that we can afford. I don't know if that makes sense to you. I'm just gonna do it here like that. Also we know that here it needs to bend this way, right? So that's here. Okay, so now we know that this curve that needs to happen like this needs to start after this line. Can't be in this direction because here the piece is pretty flat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bend it here and I'm gonna go all the way up. Now we can do that on the English wheel, but it's gonna stretch it and we don't wanna stretch it. We just want it bent because somewhere here we're gonna make this pinch, right? This pinch that we made and that's gonna, and that's gonna curve it this way a little bit. So, not that we are not stretching it now with the hammer, so we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna try to bend it 
like this maybe maybe now let's cut it shorter here because when we bend it here it opens here where our pinch needs to happen our shrink like right here so let's go do it there you go so this formed our dome here the rest should be just bent like that and if we are worried about um, marks here we can go on the english wheel later and run it a little bit but i don't think that's a big deal right now and now we have to shrink or stretch this flange in different areas to match that flange over there let's go take a look at it <coughs> of course it's not fitting now but you see how this flange has a shape it's pretty straight coming up but then it comes out right here so i can mark this on the template actually so somewhere at this height here it needs to curve out the rest it's pretty much straight down there at the bottom so this is where it needs to start curving out but first this we need to straighten because you see how it, because of this flange it didn't shrink enough and it just curved it this way so now we're gonna straighten it by just shrinking this flange okay and now here again we have to shrink so it goes out like this that's more or less now here still needs to come this way <laughs> trying slowly slowly because I don't want to stretch it I want to just curve it without stretching it might need to shrink here as well okay so we're pretty close to this shape here of this flange it just needs to go down and now you see i don't know if it makes sense to you now why we left this other piece, the first piece that we made, why well, we left it longer there, so it's gonna meet eventually with this one. So we just need to keep fixing the curve on both of them and trimming it, creeping to the correct shape so the two match each other. But other than that, I think it's pretty good. Here we can always do a little bit work on the English wheel, but for now we just need to work on this flange more bend it more and to shrink it a little bit because it's obviously too long all right that actually made it pretty close to where we wanted so now the two pieces overlap here and 
we still need to work more on the shape of this one so it can come out and touch the flange here so we might have shrunk it too much here at the sides might need to uh, stretch it again but uh, it's getting there however it's getting late and we're gonna stop here and we're gonna continue next time which for you is gonna be like all right it's another day actually it's another year <laughs> it's another year even, even. so happy new year <laughs> anyway so it's another day and we just started working again on this uh, patch nicole is taking apart that uh, front end because i'm suspecting that we're gonna see more troubles here so i told nicole to remove this plastic i was thinking that we are almost rust free actually we are rust free now we're just missing some metal but there's no rust anymore anywhere here and i told that uh, we are almost done with this side but i'm thinking we're gonna have troubles there as well so Anyways, while he's taking it apart, I'm uh, here at the back trying to see what I've done last time. It was three, four days ago. So I haven't put that flange that was here. And I'm just trying to make this piece fit first. And uh, we know that the other one fits as well. So once we make both fits individually, then we're going to try to make them fit uh, together with each other. So I see that my flange here is not following the flange on the back. So looks like we have to shrink here, stretch here, and stretch a little bit here to make it follow the same shape. And then we're gonna have to see what we're gonna do here to make it go that way to, to touch this flange because now it's not touching. So even here I bent it way too much. So we're gonna have to unbend that part but let me first try and make this fit so like we said let me mark it so from here to here we have a curve that goes this way then from here to here we have a curve that goes this way <laughs> sorry i'm talking like an idiot with a cup in my mouth and then from here all the way till the end very slight curve the other way Okay, that's better now. That flange matches pretty well. I also bent the top end a little bit out. You see, in this direction, to follow that shape because that's how the old one was. Like this. Now here, we need to bring it out, bring it forward a little bit to touch this flange. So looks like this needs to be pumped up on the English wheel. So we're gonna do the we're gonna do both. We're gonna do English wheel here to stretch it in this area, and also we're gonna shrink the end here on the shrinker to to bring it down. In the meantime, Nicola opened here some room. He removed the plastic, and uh, see here even. Here, I think we have rust. I don't think we have a hole. How come we didn't see this? Oh yeah, that's right there. Oh my God. But that's the smaller problem, I believe, because here, Nick says, well, it looks okay, we, but maybe we have to remove the paint. And then I pushed here. And do you hear this noise? Ugh, I don't think that's only paint. <laughs> So Nick is gonna take the needle scaler now and he's gonna needle scale this area to see what's behind it. I'm pretty sure there's a big hole there.
put this one first. And inside, you can see here how they overlap each other. So we're gonna cut our flange like this. And then we're gonna bend the flange up. This we can bend down a little and they're gonna match. All right, so this is how it fits. Here it is pretty well, and inside it's pretty well, surprisingly. So actually at the bottom, we can straighten both and we can shorten them because here we overbend them, both of them, you see? They need to be almost flat, so we can do that from here down and from here up we need to straighten this i overbent it wow all right i think it's time to actually weld this together i straightened this flange here a little bit to meet better with the other flange i bent this one a little bit because we have a big gap there which we're gonna have to deal with somehow here I can't make up my mind whether I want to weld back some metal and extend it and overlap again by half inch and weld the top or I should just butt weld it here and shorten the other piece, shorten this piece as well and weld it to the other one again, butt weld it. I'm not sure and here this shape is not perfect to that one but you know what, I think it's time to make this and this one piece and then deal with the rest of it here because it's gonna be easier, I believe. So I'm gonna tack them together, at least, maybe weld them, we will see, but I think it's the best idea. But that also brings the question now, do I make them flush here or do I push it in so it can line up? I'm gonna make them flush. Okay, what about down there? Ooh, we, have a, we have two spots that we can tuck it in. Yeah, that looks good. Now let's take it out and see what it looks like. That's what it looks like. So now here, well, I forgot to mark it, but we're gonna cut this flange, we're gonna trim it, and then this we're gonna bend down to match this flange underneath. But first I wanna line it up nicely here and weld it. I'm gonna go do that on the vise. All right, now I'll put it back and I'll mark this here and make those bends. Okay, so here what I'm saying is we're gonna trim this flange like this, maybe with a little rounded edge here, and here we're gonna cut it, but then this here we're gonna bend this down. It's gonna look weird, but I don't know what the original looked like. I don't know, maybe I should bend this down yeah if we open it what's gonna happen is <laughs> this flange we said 
we're gonna bend down. <sighs> but it needs to be welded here, otherwise it opens. So let me tuck it. Well, I welded it. So can I clamp it on the vise and... Okay. You know what I'm thinking to... I was thinking to somehow bend this triangle and weld it here, but I think it's only gonna make a pocket for water and mud to collect, so I'm just gonna cut it off. I think it's best if I cut off this triangle. Like that. Perfect. Okay, we can weld it later. Or I'm just gonna add a few more tacks here so it doesn't move on me. And then we're gonna deal with this here. All right, so I had to readjust a little bit this bend because it was not allowing me to push it that way. So I opened it and I bent it a little bit further. And I think that's good. I don't know what is gonna stop the water from going in that hole. You know, there's a piece of plastic here. Interesting, that's why I actually, now I remember why I wanted this <laughs> to be bent that way. Because I wanted to close that hole. We will see, we have to figure out a way to close it because I don't want water to go that way. Anyways, let's deal with this and we're gonna deal with that, with that too. So here you see, I have to push it more in, but it's hitting right here in the back. These panels are going this way, that's why there's this hump. I think this hump needs to be much bigger, like here, you see, in the old piece. Now the old piece is much longer, you know, our piece is only up to here. We're, we lost this part, we don't want it. So this hump here, you see how much bigger it is. And ours is not that big. So we have to do that. Let's see how we can do that, maybe on the English wheel. All right, so I closed this gap down there, you see I welded a piece in the corner, it looks like one piece on the outside. And here I bent it as much as I could. So let's see, I think it fits well now. Like this. So it's pretty close here. The rest is gonna be just, I'm just gonna hammer it down. Once I weld it here, I'm gonna hammer it down here and it is gonna be what it is, you know? But the rest fits pretty well, like a glove. So that's how it's gonna be. So we're gonna weld it all the way here, and here we're just gonna fill this gap, I don't care. It's inside. Um, but I don't like this here. This, <laughs> these butt cheeks here, <laughs> I don't like, because it's gonna leak inside right so i'm gonna mark it and then i'm just gonna weld this here i'm gonna fill it up with weld we're gonna grind it to be flat and hopefully it's not gonna leak inside there's plastic that comes on top as well but water is just gonna drip from here right so i'm gonna weld here first i'm gonna fill this up with weld then I'm gonna weld this all the way now. I'm not gonna hold you here for that. I'm gonna grind it slightly. I'm gonna try to make it look nice inside even though it's in the wheel well. Then we're gonna paint the back here and we're gonna weld it in place and we're gonna be ready to install the seal finally. Once we install the seal, 
we're gonna come here and we're gonna finish this wall because this needs to overlap the seal here you see we cut it from here so we cut it like this but it needs to be actually continuing line from here going down here and actually wrapping around the seal and continuing this piece i don't know why so much maybe we won't do all the way down we're just gonna do a straight line here i'm gonna wrap it we're gonna wrap the seal and then we have to deal with this which nicole just revealed and it is i don't understand why it is made in such way but that's how it's made so this this is the original hole here this panel had a hole in it and there's a piece of metal from inside that covers this hole so we will see how we're gonna deal with that later all right so it's all welded and ground and it looks like one piece it's actually two <laughs> it looks like the original i guess <laughs> i don't know if it looks like the original because that's what's left from the original but I think it looks good. All right, so it's another day. And then <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. Maybe that's a good thing because I'm not gonna talk too much. <laughs> Anyways, it's another day. And we came to the garage just for an hour or two because I wanna finish this welding here so we can actually finish the video. And uh, while I'm doing that, Nick is gonna come here and he's gonna undo this nut, so I already unplugged this. This is for the motor for the headlights. So he's, uh, he's gonna remove this nut, and there's another one here. No, actually it's on, the, on this side, right there. So he's gonna remove this, and he's gonna remove this bracket, so we can make this repair here too, because we have a problem there, right? So, yeah, but before I weld this, I'm going to take it out and paint the back, of course. And we're going to drill some holes for spot welds here, for plug welds. Because we can easily do spot welds with the spot welder. But the problem is that this means that we can't paint the back. That's why I don't like the spot welder a lot, because the back needs to be conductive. So we can only use a weld through primer, which is fine too. Maybe that's what we should do. Let me see. Yeah, we can just weld, just spray weld through primer here and on this flange. Okay, so we're gonna mask this, this flange here. We're gonna spray the rest with uh, a bed liner inside because I want everything to be sprayed with bed liner. And then we're gonna spray the flange with um, weld through primer and we're gonna do the same here. The back of this we're gonna paint with uh, bed liner, but we're gonna leave this flange with um, weld through primer only. And then we can weld them. So I sprayed the whole thing with uh, weld through primer, and then I sprayed only in this direction the bed liner, and now the flange is still, there's no bed liner on it, so that's good. Here I masked, actually I can remove it now, there you go. So I masked and then I sprayed bed liner inside. Now I'm gonna spray weld through primer here and then we can weld this, the other. It was sprayed before, but it got peeled off because of how many times we put the panel on and off. Nick is still fighting with that. <laughs> oh, you took it out? Okay. Of course, this bolt got snapped. This looks like got snapped a long time ago. So now we are in trouble here. We're gonna have to drill this out and put new bolts here because there's the second one was missing anyways. It was only on one on this side. So now we only have one here. Anyways, but that gives us access here now to this. Nick is gonna clean it now. And we're gonna repair this as well. Do we have the same problem on the other side? No. No, here the di it's different shape. It's the same shape, but this one is good. 
Okay, hopefully this side is better. All right, so now this is welded all the way up here. And I don't think it's bad. There's a little bit more here to weld, but this we can weld on the outside. So we're gonna have to finish this. We're gonna have to finish this here. But inside, it looks great. I'm just gonna grind right here because there's a spike, but the rest I'm gonna leave on as it is. This butt chick here is full. Of course, we're gonna seam seal that later. So here we said we're gonna do spot welds. Now I'm gonna take the rocker off completely so we can do the rest of the spot welds. We've done some here, plug welds actually. So we're gonna have to do the rest down there. And that's it for now. Not here, it's not welded of course because we're gonna have to take the rocker off. In the meantime, Nick cleaned up a little bit here. So we exposed this hole here. We're gonna have to repair it. It's just a flat piece from underneath and I'm gonna weld it. It's not gonna be too complicated. And now I asked him to clean here all the dirt and whatever, because we're gonna have to paint this with bed liner at the end, right? <clears throat> and everywhere inside. So we're keeping busy. All right, <clears throat> oh my God. Soon I'm not gonna be able to talk at all. Anyways, it's spot welded all the way there, everywhere. And this is welded now here, on the outside, and all the way down here. So you see how from the welding, or our, whatever we paint with, it's just burning. So it doesn't matter that we put primer or bed liner in the flange when we're burning it after, but that's nothing we can do about that. Anyways, it's all welded now and it's perfect. I'm just gonna grind it a little bit here where it might interfere with the fender. And then we're gonna prime it. We're gonna spray it with primer, then bed liner. I'm just gonna tape this edge again. Yeah, actually I'm only gonna do primer now and when it's dry, I'm gonna tape this edge again and we're gonna spray bed liner everywhere here and everywhere inside, but we want this edge to be only on primer like here so we can spot weld to the fender later. But yeah, it looks good. It looks like the original. Actually, it looks better than the original if you ask me. Right? Yeah. All right. All right, all primered. All primered here. Oh shoot, it ran. <laughs> Ruined our paint job. Um, yeah, so we're not gonna paint the bed liner yet. We're gonna let this dry, but I think that's gonna be everything for tonight because we can go inside now and finish our video. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Tomorrow we're gonna be back in the garage, we just discussed it. We can probably put finally on the, the rocker and maybe even this panel. For this reason we need to paint them tonight though, or at least the rocker, so it dries till tomorrow so we can put it on. Yeah, we will see. Anyways, let's put the end of this video here and I'm not gonna rumble too much because my throat hurts. So, so thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for commenting and subscribing. Thanks for thanks for commenting and subscribing. Thanks for sharing all the good stuff that you do for us. Happy New Year! All the best. We will see you in the next one. Bye.